Consider this problem. A 4 kilogram ball moving east at a speed of 5 meters per second strikes a 2 kilogram ball at rest. Calculate the velocities of the two balls assuming a perfectly elastic collision. Now if you want to try this problem yourself, go ahead and pause the video. So what equations do we need? Now notice that we need to calculate the velocity of the first ball and the second ball. So we have two missing variables. Therefore, we need two equations. If you only have one missing variable, you need to use the conservation of momentum. For any collision, be it inelastic or elastic, momentum is always conserved. So m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime. So v1 is the initial velocity of the first ball. v1 prime is the final velocity of the first ball. v2 is the initial velocity of the second ball and v2 prime is the final velocity of the second ball. So what this equation is saying is that the total momentum before the collision, that is the momentum of both objects, is equal to the final momentum after the collision. Now, if you have just one missing variable, this equation will be enough to solve for the missing variable. But in this problem, we have two missing variables. And so we need to use a second equation. For an elastic collision, kinetic energy is also conserved. However, it is not conserved for an inelastic collision, but it's always conserved for a perfectly elastic collision. Now you don't want to use the kinetic energy formula because it's going to be a lot of work. Instead, you want to use the simplified version of the conservation of kinetic energy. For these problems, that equation simplifies to this. It's the velocity of the first ball, that is the initial velocity of the first ball, plus the final velocity of the first ball, and that's equal to the initial velocity of the second ball plus the final velocity of the second ball. So for elastic collisions, these are the two equations that you want to use if you need to find two missing variables. So let's start with the first equation. So we have a 4 kilogram ball moving east. So m1 is 4. And it's moving east at a speed of 5 meters per second. So the velocity is positive 5. If it was moving west, the velocity would be negative. And you've got to put in that negative value. Otherwise, you won't get the right answer. Now, the second ball is at rest. So v2 is 0, which means 2 times 0 is going to be 0. Now, the mass of the first ball is 4. Now, we don't know the final velocity of the first ball after the collision. That's what we're looking for. M2, the second mass, or the mass of the second ball, that's 2 kilograms. And we don't know the final velocity of the second ball. So 4 times 5 is 20. And that's equal to 4 V1 prime plus 2 V2 prime. So let's save this equation. Now let's focus on the second equation. V1 plus V1 prime is equal to v2 plus v2 prime. So v1 is still 5. That's the velocity of the first ball. v1 prime, we don't know what that is. v2, the initial velocity of the second ball is 0. And we don't know what v2 prime is. So I'm going to take this term and move it to this side. So 5 is equal to negative v1 prime plus v2 prime. So what I'm going to do now is line up these two equations. We need to solve for v1 prime and v2 prime using a system of equations. So this is going to be 4 v1 prime plus 2 v2 prime is equal to 20 and negative v1 prime plus v2 prime is equal to 5.
So now what we have is an algebra problem. How can we solve this system of equations? So we need to use elimination. So we have positive 4v1 prime. What I need is negative 4v1 prime so that those two will cancel. So I'm going to multiply the second equation by 4. So I'm going to rewrite the first equation. It's still the same. It doesn't change. And the second equation is going to be negative 4v1 prime plus 4v2 prime. And 5 times 4 is 20. So now let's add these two equations. 4 and negative 4 adds up to 0. 2 plus 4 is 6. And 20 plus 20 is 40. So now what we need to do is take 40 and divide it by 6. So V2 prime is 6.67 meters per second. Because it's positive, that tells us that the second ball is moving to the right with that speed. So now let's calculate V1 prime using this equation. So if negative V1 prime plus V2 prime is equal to 5, what I'm going to do is take this, move it to this side, so it's going to be v1 prime but positive. I'm going to take this number and move it to that side, so it's going to turn to negative 5. So it's a v2 prime minus 5. So v1 prime is going to be v2 prime, which is 6.67 minus 5. So that's 1.67 meters per second. So for the sake of space, I'm going to rewrite it here. Now, how do we know if we have the right answer? Well, we need to make sure that momentum and kinetic energy are conserved in this problem. So let's start with momentum. M1V1 plus M2V2 has to equal M1V1 prime plus M2V2 prime. So the mass of the first ball is 4, and it has a velocity of positive 5. The second ball is at rest. The mass of the first ball is still 4, but its final velocity is 1.67. And the second ball has a mass of 2, with a final velocity of 6.67. Now, 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 times 1.67 is 6.68. And 2 times 6.67 is 13.34. Now, if we add 13.34 with 6.68, that's going to be about 20.02, which is approximately equal to 20. So that's good enough. There's going to be some rounding error, but if it's close enough, then you know you did it correctly. So momentum has been conserved. That's a good sign. So now let's make sure kinetic energy is conserved. We're going to do it two ways. The most simplest way is to use this equation. V1 plus V1 prime has to equal V2 plus V2 prime. So V1, the initial velocity of the first ball is 5. V1 prime is that value, that's 1.67. The initial velocity of the second ball, because it was at rest, is 0. And V2 prime is 6.67. Now 5 plus 1.67 is 6.67. So kinetic energy is conserved. Now let's confirm it using a more familiar equation. Let's use this one. The kinetic energy of the first object, the first ball, is 1 half m1v1 squared. And the kinetic energy of the second ball is, well, that's supposed to be m2v2 squared. And this is going to be equal to the final kinetic energy of the first ball, which is 1 half m1v1 prime squared plus the kinetic energy, the final kinetic energy of the second ball, which is 1 half m2v2 prime squared. So this is going to be 1 half times a mass of 4 times an initial speed of 5. Now once you square v, the speed doesn't, the velocity doesn't matter in terms of the sign. If you use a negative or positive 5, when you square it, it's still 25. So kinetic energy is always positive. The mass of the second ball is 0, but its initial speed is 0. So its kinetic energy on the left side is 0. Now the final speed of the first ball, we have 1.67. And the final speed of the second ball 
is 6.67. So 5 squared is 25 times 4, that's 100, times 0.5. So this is going to be 50. And this is, that's going to be 0. And then 1.67 squared times 4 times 0.5. That's 5.5778. And then we have half times 2 times 6.67 squared, which is 44.4889. So if we add that to 5.5778, you should get 50.0667. So that's approximately equal to 50. So therefore, we can see that kinetic energy is indeed conserved, which means these two answers are correct. So those are the final velocities of the two balls mentioned in this problem.